Today, this is going to be section 4-2, and we're going to be looking at the domain of functions. And today's objective, we're going to be finding the domain of these functions. Now, previously, when we defined or we looked at domain, we pretty much looked at it graphically, or we looked at it in, tor uh, in terms of sets. So when we're trying to find the domain here, graphically, we said that we just need to take the graph and project it onto the x-axis. As if, like, if we imagine this was like Play-Doh and you're smushing the graph onto it, what does that look like? And so you would get this line or this notation that would do something like this all the way through like that. And so then my domain would be from negative infinity all the way to negative 4, union from negative 2 all the way to positive infinity. So that's what the domain would look like there. Now, what would it be our domain if we were looking at equations? Now this process is a little bit more difficult and the reason is, is because we're not necessarily used to examining an equation and then thinking analytically what are some relationships that we could create from that equation. And so when we're trying to find the domain, we need to kind of use that process. We either need to isolate it and say, well, I know that this is where x is going to uh, be defined and so this is what I'm going to say it is. Or you recognize that x can't be this, and so you're going to say, well, I'm going to look for where it's not defined, and then try and look for it that way. Now, when it comes to rational functions, okay, this is like a hint here. Rational means we're dividing by an x or in some way or fashion. So like 1 over x, that's an example. The thing about this rational function is you can't divide by 0. The moment that I get a 1 over 0 in this equation here, what's going to happen is it's going to give me an undefined value. And so because of that, I can isolate my domain or create a representation of my domain by saying x can't be certain values that are going to cause me to divide by 0. Then in radical functions with even roots, you can't have a negative value inside the radical. So let's say if I just looked at the original square root of x. Well, if I plug in negative 1 in for x, that's going to give me an imaginary num number, which is not a real number, and so therefore it's not going to be on the domain, which is all the defined values for x. And so these are the types of things that we're going to have to look for when we're trying to find this domain. So on this first example here, it says the square root of 4 minus 3x. And so I kind of put my hints here off to the side for us to examine. Now this is not a rational function because I'm not divide, dividing by x. This here is a radical function and this means that it's an even root here. So because I know that it's an, uh, a radical function by an even root, I know that I can't have a negative value inside my radical. I can have zero and they can all be positive values. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say my domain has to be this defined region. And this defined region will be 4 minus 3x has to be greater than or equal to 0. It has to be that region. And so from there, now I just need to solve for x, and then that's going to give me the region in which it's going to exist. And so solving for x, I can add 3x to both sides. So I get 4 is greater than 3x. Divide both sides by 3. And so I'm going to get 4 thirds is greater than or equal to x. And so now, trying to create this, this is saying that x is everything that's smaller than 4 thirds. So if I were to look at that on a number line, I know that this is going to be 4 thirds. It's a solid circle. And x has to be everything that's smaller than that. Um, we can verify that with a point. What if I picked 0? And I plug that in. Is 4 thirds greater than or equal to 0? That's true, so that's why I shaded that side. So then from that visual representation of what I drew there, how do I then write my domain? I'm going to say that my domain is going to be from negative infinity all the way to 4 thirds. And that's going to be my answer. So notice, as a recap, what I said was because it's a radical, I cannot divide by a negative value. And so I'm going to say, well, I just want to only the positive values are 0. And so here I have it's greater than or equal to 0. Previously, I mentioned can't divide by negative value. I apologize. I meant that you can't have a negative inside the radical. And so I have to say everything's going to be greater than or equal to 0 so that it's not being inside that radical. Now this one, a little bit more complicated. I completely agree with you on that. 
So there's multiple, multiple layers to this. So first, right here, this is dividing where there's x on the bottom. So I cannot have a zero there. Also here, I'm also dividing by x. So I can't have a zero there. Because if you divide by zero somehow, then you know it's going to be an undefined value. So let's go through and do that. Well, first, I have to say that x minus 3 can't equal 0. Because if it does, then you know I'm going to get an undefined value. So I know that if I add 3 to both sides, I get x can't equal 3. And so this is going to be a, a restriction. Now, I'm not finding or isolating, say, my domain only can be these values. I'm only looking for what my domain can't be because it just happens to be the easier method when it comes to uh, rational functions. And so now the next portion, I have this 1 minus 4x over x minus 3. And I have to set that equal to 0. Well, I have to get this x minus 3 out of the denominator. So I have to multiply everything by x minus 3. So those are going to cancel out. And so I'm going to get x minus 3 minus 4x equals 0. And then so now combining like terms here, I'm going to get negative 3 minus 3x. And so equals 0. Add 3 to both sides. Negative 3x equals 3. Divide by negative 3. x equals negative 1. And so I know that x cannot equal this value because if I plug in that value, negative 1, I'm going to divide by 0. And I can't divide by 0 because that's going to give me an undefined value. So now that we're at this point, I said x can't equal 3, x can't equal negative 1. So now what I need to do here is I need to go through and draw up my number line. So here's my number line. We said that x can't equal negative 1. So open circle there. We said x can't equal positive 3. So open circle there. But I didn't say x can't be anything else. We just said that x can't be those two values there. So I have to make the assumption that x is then everything else. So now writing my domain, I can say it's from negative infinity all the way to negative 1. Union from negative 1 to positive 3 union from 3 to positive infinity. And that's going to be my answer. For this example here, it's not a rational function, right? I'm not dividing by x or anything like that. It is a radical function, but it's not an even root. I'm allowed to have negatives inside of an odd root radical. So there's no domain restrictions right now. So I can say that my domain is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity, which is going to be my answer. Let's look at this example here. I have 3x squared over x. So it's not a radical function, but it is a rational function. I can't divide by 0. So that means with my denominator here, I set that equal to 0. I could say I just can't equal that. Well, x is already by itself. So there's my domain restriction. So drawing this out, we said that x can't equal 0. But I didn't make the assumption that it can't be anything else, so it can be every other value. And so then my domain is going to be from negative infinity to 0, union from 0 all the way to positive infinity. And that's going to be my answer. This one is a little bit more complicated, but once we find each element, then from those different elements, we're going to place it on the number line and see how that's all going to fit. So here I do have an even root. So I do have a radical. I can't have a negative inside of a radical. So I have 2x plus 1 is going to be greater than or equal to 0. So that's going to be my first statement there. My next is I have an x in the denominator. So there's potential that I can divide by 0. So I have x squared minus 1, and I know that that can't equal to 0. So let's solve these two individually, and we can put our domains together or 
we can fit these two um, analyses together on our number line afterwards. So this one, I can add one to both sides, x squared equals one, square root both sides. I get x equals plus or minus one. Um, and we know that x can't equal those values. So x can't equal positive one or negative one. For the radical here, I have to subtract one on both sides. And so I get two x is greater than or equal to negative one divide both sides by 2 and I get x is greater than or equal to negative 1 half. And so now this is saying this is where x has to be and this is saying this is what x can't be. Now these have to be together meaning that think of this as an and statement. Okay, So because it's an and statement these have to be where they coexist together. So for this first one, I have negative one and positive one. We said that this is open circle and this is open circle, but it can be everything else. And then for this second statement, this one here, x has to be everything greater than or equal to one half. So if this is zero, then that means this is negative one half. So that means that this is going to be a solid circle and x is everything greater than that. So my answer is where everything overlaps. And so my answer, it overlaps here all the way to here, right? This is, end up, this is gonna end up being an open circle because they would have to both be closed circle for it to be considered overlap and then everything over here is good. So then my answer is going to be from negative one half all the way to zero, or sorry, one, union from one all the way to positive infinity. And that's going to be my answer. So for this one, we're going to have the same scenario again in which there's going to be potential for us to divide by a value that's going to be zero. And I can't have a zero or a negative value inside of my radical. So we gotta have both of them laid out. So I have to say six minus the square root of t plus three cannot equal zero. So that's one of them. And then the square root of t plus three has to be greater than or equal to zero. So finding the first one, minus six on both sides, negative root t plus three equal, can't equal negative six, divide by negative one. Then I have to square both sides and so I get t plus 3 equals 36 minus 3 on both sides. We know t cannot equal 33 because at 33 it's going to give me the value in which it's going to be a 0 in the denominator which is going to be an undefined value. So I can't have that. And then this one over here, sorry I don't need that square root, but it says t plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0 so minus 3 on both sides so t is going to be greater than or equal to negative 3. And so remember, this is like an and statement. So I have to consider these both simultaneously at the same time. So drawing out this first one, we said t is going to be greater than or equal to negative 3. So that's going to be here. And it's going to be everything greater than that. So that's OK. Then we also said t cannot equal 33. So let's say if this was 33, this has to be an open circle now. So then my domain is going to be from negative 3 all the way to 33 union from 33 all the way to infinity. And that's going to be my answer. To close today's lesson, we talked about how to find the domain of a function analytically. And so from feedback, I want to know from you what are some common domain restrictions for functions. So let's talk about the types of functions that we looked at in this lesson. And then also do some research. What are some other functions that have domain restrictions? So this does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.